Tulsi Gabbard is a former member of Congress who served a wise second district from 2013 to 2021. As of last week, she's also a former Democrat. Yep, that's right. As a lieutenant colonel, she serves in both the National Guard and the Army Reserves. She served in Iraq in 2005, ran for president on the Democrat ticket in 2020. We're thrilled to have her here with us tonight. Please welcome to the show, Tulsi Gabbard. We are so glad to have you here in person. You know, we had you once, uh, but it was remote. Yes. But it's really nice to have you in the studio, and the oh, audience the is best. I get to very be here and hang nice out with all to of you. <laughs> I, I think there were a lot of people who were kind of shocked when they heard that you were officially leaving the party that you've been a part of, and you've been uh, representing in Congress for a number of years. Yeah. What was the turning point? Uh, you know, ultimately it came down to over the years reaching this point where we are today, where today's Democrat Party is controlled by uh, a group of so-called woke fanatical ideologues. Yeah. And what's dangerous about almost everything that they're doing is they're directly undermining our fundamental freedoms, our God-given rights enshrined in the Constitution and Bill of Rights. It's not enough for them to say, well, we can agree to disagree they have to come after our freedom of speech. They have to feel as though they uh, must control the information we see, determining what is information versus disinformation. They are openly hostile towards people of faith and spirituality. Uh, coming after virtually every one of those powerful principles enshrined in the Constitution. And it got to a point where I could no longer associate myself with this party. Uh, it seems like that one of the most dangerous aspects of the far left, and I don't even want to say just Democrats particularly, but is this notion to quench the speech yeah. of people that disagree with them, violate the First Amendment, throw it out, uh, disregard it. Yeah, it, it's, it's so dangerous on many levels, um, but their, their statement that speech is violence is yeah. how they justify their actions in squashing and suppressing anyone who disagrees with them. Of course, they get to determine and decide what speech is acceptable versus what isn't. And it's such a major departure from, you know, what the ACLU used to stand for mm -hmm. in really protecting every American's right to free speech, no matter how abhorrent that speech might have been. Uh, to this point now where today they've changed their rules to say, well, we will only defend speech that is aligned with, with our views. And, and what makes this dangerous effort even worse is we look at the party that's in power today, and they are undermining our freedoms, weaponizing institutions like the Department of Justice, the FBI, Department of Homeland Security, even yeah. the Department of Education, to force their agenda, their radical agenda, on all of us to where it is comply or face the consequences. I think one of the most recent egregious examples of this um, you know, they're trying to backdoor changes to Title IX, you know, that the historic law that says there are biological differences between the yeah. male and female sex. Well, rather than go through Congress and face the American people and say, hey, we want to change this, they're trying to backdoor it through a rule change, basically to take away the definition of Title IX and add this vague thing about gender identity and telling schools, if you don't allow kids who all of a sudden one day identify by the opposite sex to use the bathroom of that opposite sex, then we will take away federal funding for kids who are eligible for free and reduced lunch. But you, you've campaigned for some Republicans over the past couple of weeks. Yeah. What gave you that comfort to be able to say, you know, these are good people, I'm going to help them? Yeah, Governor, you know, this is uh, what I've been <laughs> spending my days over the last week. It's how I'll be spending every day until Election Day uh, campaigning for great Americans. And I've, got, I've gotten asked this question almost every stop yeah. I've made by reporters to say, hey, this seems like a little bit of an odd match here. Yeah. And my answer to them is it's only an odd match if you're paying attention to the wrong things. Mm. Because what I share in common with the people who I'm going out and supporting, people like Don Bullock in New Hampshire, uh, people like Carrie Lake in Arizona, uh, people like Joe Kent in yeah. Washington State, 
Um, these are all people who have very different backgrounds, but people who are committed to putting the well-being of the American people first, putting country first, and upholding those freedoms that are in our Constitution. A position that she deserves that. A position that you took this week, you uh, spoke on the uh, Capitol grounds of Tennessee. Yes. And uh, that was a rally to bring attention to uh, Vanderbilt University, which had been conducting transgender surgeries on young people. And I mean, Matt Walsh, who was here on our show recently from the Daily Wire, uh, really exposed some of that. Yeah. Huge crowd, you spoke to them. But I mean, there must be people who say, now Tulsi, how are you able to go to that rally? I think you may have just told us, but there are some things you believe that are bigger than anybody's party, Democrat or Republican, and I, and I respect you for that. I really do, and I thank you for having the courage to say, look, there are basic differences and there are two genders, and we need to recognize that. This is just common sense, yeah. but it is so crazy, and, and it is. It blows my mind that here we are in 2022. I never would have imagined that we'd be in a place where having a, a Supreme Court justice nominee define what a woman is was an impossible task. Yeah. <laughs> that, that these very simple truths and realities that we live with in our everyday lives have now become questionable. Freedom of speech is now something that people in positions of power are saying, well, actually, no, I don't think that's relevant in today's society because speech is violence. Uh, it, and this is, this is why I'm spending every day until Election Day campaigning for people who I'm confident we'll stand up for those freedoms because we don't have a, a check and balance on this administration and the kinds of crazy policies that they're pushing forward that not only impact us, but really scarily, as we talked about in the rally today, it's impacting our kids. Yeah. It'll impact generations to come if we don't put an end to it. 100%. But well, we've got a lot more to talk about with Tulsi Gabbard, but we invite you to go to Huckabee.tv for the rest of our conversation. We're gonna find out what might be next for the former Congresswoman. Plus, our audience is gonna get some of their questions answered. And you can keep up with her on her brand new podcast, The Tulsi Gabbard Show. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, I hope you will now. The button is just below this video and there's a little bell next to it. If you click on those, YouTube will reluctantly start letting you know when we've got a new video uploaded.